Well, Paul, thank you very much indeed for joining us today. We really appreciate it. So thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. So we're here for, in Las Vegas for the uh, March meeting. How exciting is that? Super exciting. <laughs> I'm just thrilled to be here. It's the largest meeting. And this is my term as president, so I'm really happy to be here. And it's great to be back after all these years to a full-scale in-person meeting Absolutely. with the addition of many of our colleagues uh, at home viewing virtually as well. So the combination is really it's fantastic. We've got the best of both worlds. Indeed. Yes. So, Bob, you started off your uh, year as, as uh, president. I guess my two questions are, first of all, how's it going? And second of all, what are you hoping to achieve this year? This particular uh, a year, we're actually trying a new experiment of having both an in-person and a separate virtual meeting. And I think it would be interesting to see how, how that goes. We have a great opportunity also to uh, join with other member societies of the American Institute of Physics. And I see great opportunities in uh, collaborating with them, having a win-win uh, exchange on various topics. In fact, there are a variety of or organizations already in place uh, where these interchanges can happen and we want to see more of that. And then finally, I think we have a real opportunity to be more welcoming to folks who don't always make it to these meetings. And this includes uh, not just uh, physicists abroad, but also uh, folks that are underrepresented. Um, and uh, I think also the seed corn for our discipline, young, younger physicists, I think we want to bring them in. In terms of your own research, what are you most excited about in terms of your own work coming up? I'm really interested in the origins of cosmic magnetic fields. Where do these things come from? Uh, they exist in stars, they exist in planets, they exist in galaxies. And um, the question is, how did that happen? So theory has kind of led uh, for many years, and we had, had ideas for how the seed fields uh, happen. And also theories provided uh, ways of thinking about how these seed fields were amplified by, for example, turbulent motions. Mm -hmm. And what's really exciting is that over the last decade or so, it's been possible to both do simulations, computer simulations to validate the theories, but even more exciting, we can now do experiments, for example, at the laser facilities, uh, at the National Edition facility at Livermore, at the LLE at Rochester, where we can actually generate seed fields, and they can now amplify them by turbulence. So the challenge is to understand how order can come from chaos. We know, for example, the sun has a global magnetic field, a dipole field. Where the heck is that from? And we don't have a first principles understanding of how that works yet. And one of the questions is, is it going to be possible to do experiments, for example, at these laser facilities, to actually carry an experiment where we can see order coming out of chaos? And that's to be done. So I'm really excited about that possibility. John, APS itself, what work is currently being undertaken at the APS that uh, furthers its, its vision, its, its mission? So our mission is to advance and diffuse the knowledge of physics. And we're really doing that in three ways. The first is really maintaining our laser focus on our publications. We publish the world's leading journals in physics, and uh, we want to ensure that they continue to grow and adapt to our changing community. The second is to bring people together for meetings, for convening, to exchange ideas. And really what better opportunity is there than the March meeting to do this? And finally, we're really focused on building a broader and more inclusive community, expanding opportunity for people who want to pursue physics. One way these interconnect actually is that these virtual meetings that Bob was talking about actually are going global and we have satellite meetings under, that will be underway during the virtual meeting, both in Africa and Asia, where groups themselves will be coming together to hold their own little meetings and actually participating in our virtual meeting. And so this new technology, things we've learned in the pandemic, are really allowing us to expand our reach globally to become a home for the world's physics community. Now, I was reflecting myself this morning when I was coming over here that this will be my 12th uh, March meeting to APS TV. But that's a, a drop in the ocean, isn't it? And, and I'm just wondering, how do you think the APS as an organization has evolved over the years? So APS was launched in 1899. Next year is our 125th anniversary. And at the very first meeting of the American Physical Society, 36 physicists showed up in New York City. And my gosh, we have what, over 
13,000 between the in-person and virtual components of this meeting alone. So again, we grow and evolve to meet the needs of our community, as Bob was saying. There's so much going on in the world of physics, isn't there? And I was wondering, final question to you would be, in this week that we're in Las Vegas, what are you hoping to get out of the week? I've already put on my, my list of things I'm absolutely going to go to, the uh, Kavli Symposium, for sure, uh, the talks uh, for the uh, Nobel uh, Symposium. And then there is a particular talk that I'm absolutely going to go to. It's uh, a, a talk by a graduate student at Harvard, uh, Linnell uh, Williams. She's going to talk about a topic that I think is becoming a real live wire topic, which is the cost the implicit cost and the explicit cost of being a graduate student. And I'm really, really interested in hearing her perspective on that question. I'm also really looking forward to the serendipity of it all because you drop into a session, you don't know what you're going to see and you're going to learn new stuff. And that's the whole point of a meeting like this. Thank you both so much for uh, joining us, taking the time to do that. It's been great and thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.